A woman who rose to fame on YouTube with her videos on parenting, child care, and marriage is charged with six counts of felony child. Hi, mom. You your you're fighting. always on your phone. Uh, is everybody in agreement with me here how creepy this is? But uh, there is something more sinister <laughs> with these people. Most of us probably have had childhood memories of our parents shoving a camera in our faces to capture big moments in our lives. Private moments only meant to be shared with loved ones. Now imagine those memories being plastered all over the internet for the world to see. For the children on some family YouTube channels, this is a very grim reality. And these kids are imprisoned by this lifestyle. So we're gonna start with the lighter stuff and dive deeper into the darker topics later on in the video. Welcome my friends to the creepiest family channels on YouTube and I hope you all have have a fantastic day. The Ingham Family. The Ingham family started off as what seemed like your typical YouTube family vloggers. The parents, Sarah and Chris, would post videos about family outings and holidays featuring their three children, Isabel, Esme, and Isla. But as their channel gained more subscribers, the Ingham's videos got more and more personal. And their YouTube content took a bizarre turn when they welcomed their newborn son, Jace, to the family. In March of 2019, they posted a video titled Emotional Live Birth, Labor and Delivery. The video documents Sarah's seven hour delivery. It features everything from her painful contractions to the physical birth of their newborn son, Jace. Eight minutes past seven oh on the 27th of March, 2019. The video currently has one million views, meaning that almost one million strangers have seen the most intimate time in any person's life being born. And this is when things started to get creepy. At only 10 days old, the parents created an Instagram account for Jace. While most parents of newborns are focused on nap time and feeding, it seemed like Sarah and Chris are more concerned about Jace racking up followers on social media. From there, the Inghams used social media, mainly YouTube, to make money off of their newborn son. They did it in a creepy way. Four months after Jace was born, the Ingham family posted a video on their channel titled, We Have a Very Special Secret to Tell. Huge announcement. In the video, the mom, Sarah, announced that they were now selling lifelike replica dolls of their newborn son, Jace. This was made to represent Jace when he was two weeks old, similar to the age in the photo that you will receive on the birth certificate if you buy one of these. The doll is so identical to Jace that it's hard to tell that it's even a doll. Here's a side-by-side -side image of the real baby Jace and the reborn baby Jace replica. The Ingham family began selling reborn baby Jace dolls on maryshortle.com. These limited edition Jace dolls were sold for hundreds of dollars a piece. One viewer commented on the Jace doll video saying, imagine the horror when you're old enough and realize your parents replicated you in a doll form. Highly creepy and inappropriate to sell your own child. The Ingham used their YouTube channel to promote the Jace doll. One of their videos included a caption saying, get your very own baby reborn Jace doll here, followed by a link to the Mary Shortle online store. Jace's parents acted like selling dolls of their son to strangers was a completely normal thing to do. In a BuzzFeed interview, the father Chris described the baby Jace dolls as a great opportunity for their fans. But who really benefited from this great opportunity? The Inghams ended up producing 250 newborn baby Jace dolls, which means the parents could have possibly gained anywhere from $73,000 to $92,000 selling replicas of their son. After receiving major backlash, Chris and Sarah Ingham posted a video titled, This Needs to Be Said. In the video, Chris and Sarah addressed the negative comments they'd receive about the baby reborn Jace dolls. Instead of admitting that profiting from selling dolls of their son could be questionable, the parents portrayed themselves as the main victims in this situation. Some of you may already know this, but we have been the victims of some of the most severe, disgusting hate online. But the Ingham family is just the tip of the creepy family channel's iceberg. Taking clickbait too far. Some people think running a YouTube channel is easy, making videos one day and taking it easy for the rest of the week. Well, let me tell you, it most definitely is not. I always have to find ways to cut down time and stay efficient. Enter today's sponsor, Opera. But Opera isn't just a browser. It's a whole toolkit to help in content creation. So I usually have a lot of tabs open, which can get messy. But with Opera's tab islands, I can easily group similar websites together. So I could put Social Blade and View Stats together while my scripts are in another. My favorite Opera feature is the side 
sidebar because with one click, I can use Aria for quick information, browse X or check your guys' messages on Instagram. And then there's Aria, Opera's free generative AI service. When I'm doing research for these videos, there's a ton of words that I don't understand, but I could literally highlight a word, click explain briefly and Aria explains it briefly. So if I'm looking at an article on creating great thumbnails and I don't know what click through rate means, then I just highlight it, click explain briefly and there it is. It's the ratio of clicks on a link to the number of times it's shown. And in this case, a thumbnail. Thank you, Aria. And that's not all. Opera has a built-in ad blocker and a VPN for smoother and safer browsing. And best of all, all these features are free. Make sure you guys click that first link in the description and download the Opera desktop today for free. Meet the Prince family. The Prince family includes the mother Bianca, father Damien, and their four kids, DJ, Kyrie, Nova, and Ayla. Between their two YouTube channels, the official Prince family and the Prince Family Clubhouse, they have over 13 million subscribers and their videos have reached a total of almost 1.2 billion views. Unlike typical YouTube family channels, the Prince family didn't become famous by only posting vlogs of family vacations or holidays. The parents, Bianca and Damien, gained their millions of followers by also posting skits that are supposed to teach parenting lessons. Sounds harmless, right? But when you look beneath the surface, it seems the videos aren't really about teaching good parents. Parenting. They're more about getting a lot of views by putting their sons, DJ and Kyrie, in compromising situations. On January of 2022, the Prince family posted a video titled, Parents Break Up in Front of Boys They Instantly Regret It on Their Channel. The video begins with a father, Damien, refusing to play with his two sons, DJ, who is eight, and Kyrie, who is six, which then escalates into their parents getting into a fight while their sons listen in. But what you don't have is time to spill your kids. Why are you so mad? From there, things continue to get worse. At one point, Bianca sits DJ and Kyrie down and tells them that their father doesn't want to spend time with them. Even though this is all an act, the disappointment on the boys' faces appears very real. After featuring increasingly intense fights that take place in front of Kyrie and DJ, Bianca packs a suitcase and threatens to leave. What is she doing? What does it look like I'm doing? <laughs> Going somewhere? I'm packing up and leaving, and I'm taking the kids with me. All of this eventually leads up to Bianca and Damien attempting to make up in a sweet and happy moment. But the fighting seemed to take a toll on their kids. In a weird twist, the video ends with a quote on screen that reads, be a good example for your kids. They look up to you more than you realize. Although the message for parents is good, the way the Prince family presents it is bizarre. No child wants to witness their parents breaking up in front of their eyes, even if the breakup is part of an act. The video currently has over 1.3 million views. So I guess the Prince family's goal to get as many views as possible was a success, but they've been getting a lot of backlash. And on top of this, they take things further. If you scroll through the Prince family's channel, you'll see an endless amount of creepy clickbait. The Prince family is notorious for using titles and thumbnails as clickbait in their videos, and they've been accused multiple times of taking this tactic too far. YouTuber Ethan Klein took a deep dive into the Prince family's creepy clickbait on his podcast, H3. This is how he describes it. Most horrific clickbait on their kids that I've ever seen. One of their creepiest thumbnails is for a video titled, What Happened to Nova's Face? She Freaked Out. Nova is Damien and Bianca's daughter, and she was just shy of two years old when the video was posted. The video's thumbnail shows two-year-old Nova with tears in her eyes and an open sore on her face, not to mention the added clickbait using worms. He took worms out of her face. That's the clickbait. You can't do that, you guys. Help so me, bad. daddy, it says. You should be so deeply ashamed of what you're doing. What makes the situation even weirder is that the video had actually pretty much nothing to do with the thumbnail and title. The video is actually about Damien and Bianca celebrating hitting 8 million subscribers on YouTube and donating clothes to Goodwill. There were no worms involved and the massive wound on Nova's face is actually just a scratch that was featured for less than a minute. Uh, Nova, why you scratch your face up for it? Okay. It doesn't hurt? Yeah. Are you excited about hitting 8 million family members? After receiving backlash, the Prince family eventually replaced the thumbnail featuring Nova. But the Prince family seems to still be pushing boundaries. This next family YouTube channel takes pranking their own children to disturbing levels and the pranks have led to real life consequences. The downfall of Daddy 05. 
Welcome to the channel Daddy05. This family YouTube channel features the Martin family, which is made up of the father, Mark, mother, Heather, and their children, Jake, Ryan, Emma, Cody, and Alex. One thing to remember is that Heather is Cody and Emma's stepmom. The Daddy05 channel revolved around Mark and Heather pranking their kids. The pranks started innocently, involving things like Mark jumping out and scaring his kids. As the channel slowly started to gain subscribers, Mark realized that the videos where the kids had extreme reactions to his pranks gained more views. This is where things took a creepy turn. Some of their kids had more extreme reactions than others, but one kid in particular would often have meltdowns in reaction to pranks, their 10-year-old son, Cody. Cody had been diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder, or commonly phrased as ODD. According to the Mayo Clinic, oppositional defiance disorder includes a frequent and ongoing pattern of anger, irritability, arguing, and defiance toward parents and other authority figures. In the eyes of his parents, this made Cody the perfect pranking target. So many of Daddy O5's videos involved putting Cody under extreme distress. In one of his most questionable pranks on Cody, Mark convinced Cody that they were sending him away to live with another family. Mark tells his son that their reason for sending him away is because he's really annoying. Do you not like me as a kid? I do like you as a kid, but you're really annoying. At first, Cody tries to call their bluff and insists that there's no way his family would abandon him. Cody's attitude changes though when his father begins to pack up Cody's things in a suitcase. Mark then tells Cody's brother Alex that they're putting his brother up for adoption. Go! Alex, we're giving Cody up for adoption. Yes. And this is gonna be your room. From there, Mark makes a fake phone call to an unknown person telling them to pick Cody up. Mark eventually admits that this was all a prank and they're not putting Cody up for adoption, but at that point, the damage had already been done. What's even creepier is that Mark calls this video a success. See the prank that I did on Cody that failed miserably. I mean, well, it technically, it didn't fail because it worked out, he got mad, pissed off, all that, and there was a reaction. Now this next prank is where the consequences begin. In 2017, Daddy05 uploaded a video titled Invisible Ink Prank, Epic Freakout, and it would end up being the nail in Daddy05's coffin. The plan was just for Cody's stepmom, Heather, to squirt invisible ink on his carpet, then blame him for the stain. I bought this here, invisible ink, and I'm gonna squirt it all over his carpet and start flipping out. Mark and Heather proceeded to call Cody into the room and scream at him for staining the carpet. As his father and stepmom yell at him, Cody becomes overwhelmed with emotion. His face turns bright red and he begins crying while repeatedly saying, I didn't do that. As the tensions rise, Cody's brother Alex steps in to try to defend his brother, but backfires on Alex and they accuse him of staining the carpet. From that point, Cody and Alex are crying while their parents continue yelling yelling at them. Mark finally reveals that this was all a prank and no one is actually in trouble. It's invisible ink, it goes away! <laughs> Mark was laughing while his sons were visibly shaken up. And the video even ends like this. And <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe to Daddy05. The Invisible Ink Prank video instantly received major backlash from the YouTube community. And the video was removed from the Daddy05 channel shortly after being posted, but that didn't stop people from continuing to raise issues with the Daddy05 channel. This looks horrible and traumatic. This then resulted in myself and others going through a bunch of their other videos to find if there were other instances of this. And we didn't have to look hard. There were multiple examples. Daddy05 was now on a lot of people's radars, including the police. The Maryland police launched an investigation into Heather and Mike Martin. They didn't have to go digging for evidence. Everything they needed was plastered all over the Daddy05 YouTube channel. In July 2017, Heather and Mike were charged by a Maryland court for the ink prank video and other similar pranks on their Daddy05 channel. But things got even worse from there. That new fallout for the YouTube family whose extreme prank video sparked a major backlash and TJ Holmes has new details for us. Mike and Heather ended up losing custody of Cody and their daughter, Emma. Police removed the kids from the house and placed them in the custody of their biological mother, Rose Hall. When Rose was reunited with Cody and Emma, it was clear that Cody had been brainwashed by his stepmother, Heather, and his father, Mike. He said some things that were disturbing, that he hated me, that Mike and Heather told him I threw him away 
like he was garbage. Cody and Emma eventually readjusted to their new home and now seem to be living happily. The same cannot be said though for Mike and Heather. The two pleaded guilty for their charges and were sentenced to 10 years probation. In light of all the controversy surrounding the channel, YouTube took down the Daddy 5 channel. But that didn't stop Heather and Mike from continuing to post videos on the internet. The two created a website called family05.com. They uploaded videos to the website and charged people membership fees in order to view their content. Their mission to continue making money off videos featuring their kids was brought to an end though because they were forced to take down the website due to violating the terms of their probation. But Daddy05 isn't the only family channel whose creepy videos led to terrible consequences. The infamous eight passengers. You might have already heard of 8 Passengers and their controversies. 8 Passengers is a family YouTube channel that was created in 2015 by Ruby Frank. Ruby posted vlogs featuring her husband Kevin and their six kids, Sherry, Chad, Abby, Julie, Russell, and Eve. On the surface, 8 Passengers seemed pretty innocent. Ruby mainly posted vlogs discussing parenting and marriage. The only downside to giving your kids a flip phone is I swear I have to remember how to work it every time I go through it. At first, Ruby seemed pretty relatable. She posted honest videos about the struggles that come with being a wife and a mom to six kids. The Eight Passengers channel even had a following of roughly 2 million subscribers. But when you look below the surface of this relatable mommy vlogger, you'll find some of the creepiest family dynamics on YouTube. As Eight Passengers rose to YouTube fame, viewers began pointing out some of Ruby's questionable parenting methods. And the more you look at the Eight Passengers videos, it becomes clear that Ruby Ruby wasn't just a mother, she was a dictator. Ruby ruled her household with an iron fist, and she went to bizarre methods to discipline her children. One of Eight Passengers' most controversial videos involves Ruby's oldest son, Chad, explaining his most recent punishment. My bedroom was taken away for seven months, and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. <laughs> While Ruby creepily laughs, Chad goes on to reveal that he's been sleeping on a beanbag for months. But he must have done something pretty horrible to warrant losing his bedroom for seven months, right? Well, this was the reason. That I woke Russell up at two in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. <laughs> it was a small prank where Chad made Russell think that they were going to Disneyland. I'm sure anyone who has siblings is guilty of pulling some pranks on them. But in the Frank household, they were not tolerated. Another of Ruby's most notorious videos features her ranting to the camera about her six-year-old daughter Eve forgetting to bring her lunch to school. Eve's teacher then texted Frank asking her to drop off Eve's lunch. Ruby's response? I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch and it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with lunch. But Ruby had zero plans on easing anyone's discomfort. Instead, she decided to let her daughter go hungry in order to teach her a lesson. Again, Eve was only six years old when this took place. The video received major backlash, and viewers began commenting on the questionable lengths Ruby was going in order to teach her children a lesson. Ruby responded to their concerns with this video. Who would like to cancel me? Who would like to see me um, either burn in hell, as I have told, or um, disappear off the face of the earth, and I'm not going anywhere. But little did Ruby know she was going somewhere, somewhere terrible. I need to introduce you to Jody Hildebrandt. Jody Hildebrandt describes herself as a life coach and licensed therapist who has five years of experience with treating addiction. In 2012, Jody started a company called Connections Classroom, an online-based education program that helps people overcome issues including addiction, relationship problems, and mental health struggles. If you're like me, you've had pain in your life. It could be from a divorce, work conflicts, relationship issues with children, grandchildren, spouse. Basically, people can pay to be members of Connections and receive Jody's online resources to help them deal with whatever issues they're facing. Jody teaches three main truths, impeccable honesty, rigorous personal responsibility, and humility. On her website, she claims if people do not learn these new truths from her, they would never be able to connect with you or others. But what does this all have to do with Ruby Frank and Eight Passengers? Well, if you look 
on the Connection website, you'll see Ruby listed as one of Connection's team members. Her description says she is a certified mental fitness trainer with Connections. The website also states that she provides content on Connection social media platforms and podcasts that focus on empowering parents and children to live in truth. Ruby, who has been accused of extreme methods, joined Connections in 2022 as a parenting expert. Ruby began making regular appearances on Connections YouTube channel. The channel featured videos of Jody and Ruby discussing and lecturing on parenting methods. I love children. I love your children. And I have a very sacred charge to help you protect them. What I'm about to tell you will make that statement by Jody feel very uncomfortable. Now, let's fast forward to 2023. On August 10th, 2023, one of Jody's neighbors placed a chilling call to 911. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. And he uh, said he had just came from a neighbor's house, and we know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. That 12-year-old boy was Ruby's son, Russell. And the neighbor's house he came from belonged to Jody Hildebrand. Jody's neighbor goes on to explain that Russell had escaped from Jody's house by crawling out of a window and appeared to be distressed, malnourished, hungry, and thirsty with tape on his legs. From there, Utah police came knocking on Jody's door. Once they entered the house, they were horrified by what they saw. Police discovered that Ruby's daughter, 10-year-old Eve, was being held captive in Jody's home. She was also in the same horrible condition as her brother, Russell. Russell and Eve were then taken to the hospital for medical evaluation. Upon further investigation, the police learned that Ruby had left her two children in the care of Jody for an unknown amount of time. What we do know is that Ruby was in Jody's house on multiple occasions while her children were subjected to severe mistreatment. As a result, both Rudy and Jody were arrested by Utah police on August 30th, 2023. Ruby and Jody have been charged with six felony counts relating to the horrible condition Russell and Eve were living in including physical injury, starvation, and mistreatment. Both of them have pleaded not guilty and are currently being held in a Utah jail awaiting trial. Outside of jail, things continue to unravel for Jody and Ruby. Jody Hildebrandt has lost her medical license and Ruby and her husband have temporarily lost custody of four of their underage children, Eve, Russell, Julie, and Abby. YouTube recently took down the Eight Passengers channel, but there's one family YouTube channel still operating in plain sight that I find pretty chilling, the family of scammers. This is the LeBrand family. Currently with over 13 million subscribers, the family includes parents Cole and Savannah LeBrand and their four children, Everlay, Posey, Zealand, and Sunday. Like most family YouTube channels, the LeBrand fam posts vlog style videos showcasing their everyday family life. But what looks like the picture perfect family on the outside is in reality, a family full of creepy secrets. Cole and Savannah have an interesting backstory. Cole and Savannah's relationship was born out of internet fame. Cole gained internet fame in 2013 with a viral Vine post made with his friends who called themselves Dem White Boys. Quickly rising to internet fame, Cole enjoyed the spotlight, but the other members got tired of their cringeworthy videos, so the group fell apart. Meanwhile, Savannah became pregnant at 19 with her then boyfriend, Tommy Smith. She gave birth to her daughter, Everlay, in 2012. From there, she rose to internet fame by posting videos with Everlay on Musical.ly, which is now TikTok. Cole and Savannah first started interacting with each other over Musical.ly. So literally the only person I ever DM'd on Musical.ly was me. Was her. And it was just like a spur of the moment type thing. Like I, I, I never do that. When Savannah was 23 and Cole was 19, they unexpectedly met face to face while Cole was visiting California. First thing I think is like, well, that's a pretty girl. But then like, as I'm like kind of checking her out, I realized like I've seen her before. And I'm trying to think like where I saw her. And then I was like, oh, that's the... I think that's the girl from Musical.ly. From there, the two social media stars were inseparable. They got married in 2017, and their wedding video currently has over 50 million views on YouTube. Even though he was only 21 years old, Cole fully embraced his role as Everlay's stepdad. The LeBrant Fam channel became flooded with videos featuring Cole and Everlay. One video titled Four-Year-Old Girl and Daddy Do Cutest Carpool Karaoke Ever currently has over 121 million views. As their YouTube channel grew bigger and bigger, so so did their family. Cole and Savannah went on to have three kids together, Posey, Zealand, and Sunday. Their faces are also plastered all over the LeBrant fam channel. 
But like I mentioned earlier, the seemingly picture-perfect family is far from perfect because behind their smiles lies a dark history. In 2018, they posted a video titled, We Left Our House Because of Fires in California. In the video, Cole and Savannah claimed that they were forced to evacuate their Ladera Ranch home due to California wildfires spreading through their neighborhood. So we're all packed up. Go to PlayStation for Fortnite. So we got our necessities and these two tiny bags, everything that we don't want to get burned down. A few days after posting the video, people started to poke holes in Savannah and Cole's story. It turns out this was all a lie. The wildfires were not near the LeBrant family's Ladera Ranch home, and one of their neighbors exposed Cole and Savannah's lies on the news. Marissa Seamus lives near the LeBrants. She says plenty of the neighbors are not amused by the social media influencers. And I just think it's really sad that they would exploit a situation that's as serious as a fire that so many people were evacuated just so that they could get more likes or more hits on their channel. Cole and Savannah exploited a life-threatening crisis for clickbait and views. But this isn't the only scam they've been wrapped up in. In 2021, the LeBrands posted a video titled She Got Diagnosed with Cancer documentary. In the video, Cole and Savannah reveal that their toddler Posey has been in and out of the hospital since her birth. Then the word cancer comes into play. I was truly just riddled with anxiety. I had convinced myself that our two-year-old daughter had had cancer. Cole casually just dropped the bomb. Despite the video being titled, She Got Diagnosed with Cancer, their daughter was never actually diagnosed with cancer. The LeBrands were essentially using cancer as the furthest form of clickbait. The couple quickly received massive backlash for misleading people into thinking that their daughter had cancer just so people would click on the video. He said, hey, let me see if I can clickbait the hell out of my daughter not having cancer and bring in some random families that do so that I can monitor real suffering since they're perfectly fine. Cole eventually posted an Instagram story where he addressed the backlash the video received. In it, he said, I want to start off by apologizing for any misleading title or thumbnail. I promise you that is not our heart. He then went on to say, this is a video that we have been working so, so hard on for the past six months. Nothing for us, nothing for our gain. Despite his apology, the video is still on YouTube and is still titled, She Got Diagnosed with Cancer. While this cancer scam video revolved around around Posey, Savannah's daughter and Cole's stepdaughter, Everlay, appears to be the star of the LeBrant Fam channel. Like I mentioned earlier, Savannah rose to internet fame by posting videos of her and Everlay on Musical.ly. So Everlay was raised on social media. I mean, social media is a great tool to connect with people and share what's important to us, but it can also be a breeding ground for disgusting people. From her dance recitals to trips to the water park documented on YouTube, Everlay is not safe. One YouTuber, Josh Barbour, who hosts the the Dad Challenge podcast took a look behind the curtain of Everlay's social media presence, and what he discovered was not okay. In a video titled Bombshell Truths About the Dangers Family Vlogging, Josh dove into the analytics behind some of the biggest YouTube family channels. The video takes a disturbing turn when Josh uncovers the audience demographics of Everlay's Instagram followers. Now look at her demographics, everybody. 70% male. Lowest percentage is teenagers. So we can just eliminate that, but here we go. 50% of their male audience of 70% is watching this little girl and is between the ages of 18 and 44. Those numbers are horrible. How will Everlay feel about this 10 years from now when she's able to fully grasp the fact that her parents have been making money off exposing her life to millions of strangers? How would any of these family channel kids feel when they're adults looking back at these videos? I believe in working hard for your income, but I don't believe in pushing moral boundaries to get there. These family YouTube channels seem to be doing whatever it takes to gain success, but at the expense of their children. So let me ask you, is that really success? I'll let you decide. Visual Venture. Wait, before you go, click this playlist to watch my videos about the dark side of internet culture because the algorithm is going to promote my channel more if you guys watch multiple videos. Have an absolutely beautiful week. Peace.